Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Carto. I'm Lisa Martin and today we're excited to be joined by Javier De La Torre, the founder and chief strategy officer at Carto. We're going to be talking about how Carto is bringing cloud native spatial analysis to the cloud with AWS. Javier, great to have you on the program. Thank you, Lisa. Very nice being here. Talk to us about Carto. What do you guys do? Great, so uh, Carto is a location intelligence platform. But we really is enabling organizations to work with location data on the context of on the, on the AWS cloud. So essentially enabling organizations to analyze where do they, where should they open new stores? You know, where should they kind of deploy their new antennas? In, in essence, understanding the, the location dimension. It's helping them to figure out where to do things. From Carto's perspective, talk to me about why spatial analysis location data is important. What power does it give to businesses in any industry? Right. Um, I mean, we like to say that everything happens somewhere, right? So we understand that, you know, like the physical world is a very important dimension. So understanding where things happen and the relation within space is a pretty fundamental dimension when it comes to analytics. I like to put examples of um, if all your neighbors uh, install alarms in their homes, the likelihood that you will get an alarm is also increases quite a lot. So that's in the end all says that we are all influenced by the things that happens around us. And if you can model and understand those spatial relations, you can then look to optimize or predict what is going to happen based on where things are happening. And this is something that we've seen a lot, for example, with the pandemic, but now we're seeing, you know, like many organizations utilizing it for, yeah, for finding out where they can find new customers to, you know, like I said, you know, like where do they deploy the new infrastructure? Everything at the end has a spatial component and that's what a spatial analytics and location intelligence allows you to do. Give me some examples of spatial data. The first thing that pops into my mind is GPS, but I know that there's a lot more than that. Right, uh, GPS has been one of the most important types of data, of course. So it's you know, the availability of GPS and, and with mobiles and different sensors are starting adding it, we've seen an incredible amount of location data coming into place. But you're right, there's many other types of location data that uh, people tend not to be so aware. I'd say any company that is handling customers, you know, they're likely going to have their addresses. So if you have the address of the customer, you have a location already. We have, we call that the process of geocoding. We transform an address into coordinates, right? But you also have the same, you know, with IPs and you have the same uh, with many different zip codes. You know, like it's many different ways that you can represent location. And once you identify those uh, location bits in your data, then you can start thinking about what type of analysis you can do with them. So uh, it is, like I said, like in many, many places, but definitely the, the rise of uh, GPS and sensors have been very dramatic. Now we've seen in also like a huge stream of location data coming, for example, from satellites, you know, with all these uh, constellations of I mean, satellites uh, capturing kind of like daily images on from Earth, you know, like that is also giving us a lot of contextual information. But so it is, you know, mobile phones when you connect to cell towers, you know, there's many different pieces that are now kind of giving us location data. So you alluded to that earlier, a lot more businesses are using location data in their strategies. Talk to me about the acceleration that you've seen of that in the last couple of years alone. Yeah, so I think, you know, like, uh, one thing that we've seen, you know, like massively on the industry, obviously, is this as companies are going through the digital transformation, they are applying analytics to bigger and bigger areas of their of their of their businesses, right? And in a way, location kind of came as one of the last dimensions that a lot of organizations have started to look at. And over the last two years, we've seen that changing a lot. We've seen in, we've seen many more organizations now making the questions around where things happen, how does it actually matter to my business. So this acceleration you know, has essentially meant that many more people are now starting to look at not only seeing things on a map, like you know, where my customers are, where my uh, warehouses are, how is my logistics, how I think, how I, where is it located. Now we're starting to see many more organizations looking at questions about uh, how can I predict where something is going to happen or how can I optimize my business process so that um, you know, I, I can reduce the number of kilometers uh, that I have to drive miles. 
So um, I guess it's a mix of the need for sustainability, optimizing you know, the business's process, and the fact that more and more organizations are, st are starting to do much more digital transformations, that now location data has become a much more interesting uh, aspect you know, for many more organizations. So I think you know, like all these things together has made in a way the perfect storm, and now we're seeing a lot of demand to um, for companies that want to go beyond seeing things on a map to understanding why things happen in those cases. And that's, I think, you know, like, again, a multitude of drivers, you know, that is pushing this industry. Can you talk about some of the key use cases and maybe some of the vertical industries where you've really seen this take off in the last couple of years? Yes, and I think this is in a way one of the most interesting factors of our industry. Traditional industries have been on the area around security in the public sector. You know, I was very much on the military and the, in the in the uh, intelligence ecosystems. But now we're seeing we're seeing tremendous adoption on, on on industries like retail, right, where they are like now consolidating what is their own what is their physical presence. Where do they open stores? You know, like. Food, uh, food chains, where do they open restaurants? Uh, it's a much more analytical process now towards making these decisions, and that involves the usage of location intelligence and space analytics, so we do. So that's one, but we've seen also like tremendous uh, um, increase in usage on, on things like on telcos. Telecommunication now with all the, the, the deployment of 5G networks, fiber optics, most of those uh, um, operations require a very, good understanding of where you should deploy your networks, you know, which, which areas you want to go start first, you know, to, to have a smart CapEx kind of like a strategy. So that's, Telco, I would say it also has been a tremendous uh, increase. Um, the public sector is obviously uh, very important, you know, especially, you know, with COVID, a lot of the, in a way, we all got a master of, you know, why geography matters and, you know, how to understand your location. Um, and the last one that I would say that it's also connected very much with climate change, transportation and logistics are a very, very important factor now. So understanding what is the best uh, strategies for uh, last mile delivery, you know, like how to um, organize your um, warehouses to better meet your needs. Those are the places that now we're seeing like really kind of like growing really, really fast. So tremendous amount of use cases, a lot of opportunity there for optimization. How have companies traditionally analyzed spatial data? And, and why does that need to change? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, to, I mean, to a certain extent, I would like to say that there's not that been um, that much usage of location data. And that I think is one of the most exciting parts, that for many organizations, this is the first time that they're looking at location as a, as a new dimension that they need to understand. So there were, there were uh, uh, several organizations kind of like doing already a spatial analytics, but right now we're really, we really seeing the expansion of our industry and, you know, and catching up in, in major, uh, major companies. So those, you know, like uh, more advanced, you know, will have used the so-called the traditional GIS systems. GIS is a, it's a, it's kind of like a type of software that has been existing for many years, but it was only, let's say, kind of like, used by a very small niche of analysts, you have to go almost like four years to school, you know, to become a GIS expert and then do GIS analyst. This is right now changing dramatically. And I think, you know, Carter is part of that uh, uh, transition. So essentially making the spatial analysis and GIS part of just the gener general analytics. And I think this is one of the most exciting times uh, that we have because we've seen the democratization of spatial analytics now to a much wider audience. So now we're seeing, you know, like analysts that, you know, used to be, used to know how to make a map, see things on a, on a map, you know, where, where something was happening. Now we're starting to see them making much more interesting questions about like, okay, if it happens here, where else could they be happening, right? So that's, this is, you know, like right now, the, 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 the huge stage. I'd say, I'd say, you know, like many organizations is the first time they're going to geo. And for people like me who've been, very passionate about the possibilities of really improving processes. I mean, this is super, super exciting time. I can definitely feel your passion here through Zoom, <laughs> Javier. Talk to me a little bit about how Carto and AWS are helping organizations to embrace the democratization of spatial data and really unlock its superpowers. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you know, like that AWS as the leader on the cloud, uh, I mean, like that in a way has fundamentally changed the way that we think about, you know, like analytics. Right, so uh, not only the cloud, you know, like provide us with uh, huge scalability, 
you know, like scalability, affordable scalability. So that's one of the things that, you know, has been incredibly um, transformative in our industry. Uh, with AWS now, we can do analysis at the scale that wasn't possible before. So that's, that's, that's one part. So for us, you know, like what we've embarked uh, with AWS is rethinking how we can do a space and analytics in the cloud. We're calling it, you know, Carto Cloud Native. It's providing a full cloud native approach towards performing the space analytics from the traditional GIS. And for us, you know, this is again giving us huge amount of scalability. We use services like uh, Redshift that now with their serverless capabilities, we you know, like a, an organization have their data already on that data warehouse on Redshift and using Carto spatial extension to Redshift, now they can do a spatial analytics directly on the warehouse. This is one of the biggest characteristics of Carto. By being the first cloud native platform, every computing that we do actually gets pushed down to the warehouse. So the customer is already using the computing engine that they're already, they've been using it for many other things they're paying for already. And that gives us scalability, it gives us uh, also very cost effectiveness, the storage computing separation that the Red Set service provides, it makes it very competitive from a, like a cost perspective. And then also it's very convenient. It means that you can use just traditional SQL that you know, many analysts know how to use and within the tools that they've been using for many years. So, so I think you know, like the car to space and extension to Redshift and then also with incorporating the Amazon location services so we can talk to, right, it essentially provides a, a cloud native, you know, like a scalable, cost affordable, you know, like efficient and much more uh, easy to use um, uh, solution to perform a space analytics than anything that has been done before. It's a tremendous amount of opportunity. It sounds like we're just scratching the surface, but really interesting things that Cartier was doing and how you're enabling organizations in every industry to accelerate the use of spatial data. Javier, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. Fascinating information and best of luck to you. Thank you very much. For Javier De La Torre, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. Stay right here for more coverage of the hybrid tech event world.